another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition, it's Barbie, brought to us by High Tech Expressions. Barbie is a traditional platformer starring, of course, the most famous doll in the world, Barbie. And before you ask, I've gotten lots of requests, and that's why I'm doing this game. Other than that, this game actually happens to be one of the few Barbie games that is a traditional platformer that you actually can complete, has health, and actually you can fight bosses in the game. And it may sound like if you're able to get past the aspect of playing as a Mattel doll, you may actually enjoy the game. But unfortunately, that's not the case because the game ends up still being rather shallow and has pretty poor control overall. So here we go with Barbie for the NES. At the beginning of the game, you have a startup screen where you get to see Barbie on the left side, along with the copyright of the game. After waiting a few seconds, you'll get the credits and then storyline for the game, having Barbie travel through different dream worlds and you have to complete each and every one of her dreams. And you can see, the first dream is going to have her going to the mall to pick up a new outfit for the party tomorrow. And then the game will actually finally begin. As you can see, the graphics for the game aren't the worst you've ever seen on the NES, that's for sure. However, as soon as you find yourself jumping for the first time, you'll soon learn that the controls are rather clunky. Barbie will easily miss platforms from time to time, and you'll end up falling through areas you easily should have been able to land on. You have three items at your disposal. You have a ribbon, a diamond, and a heart. I'll be honest, I don't know what each item really is supposed to do. All I know is you have to use certain ones on certain objects in the background in order to actually make them do things. Such as throwing diamonds at birds, and then they fly upwards, allowing you to use them as a platform. Your health is located in the right corner, and is represented by Z's, of course the classic letter that represents sleep. The good thing is, though, you have a good amount of health, as well as there's lots of health upgrades throughout the game, so you should be able to keep your health up at all times. At the end of this area is your first boss. You must throw a diamond, or a left and right arrow, whatever I'm currently selected on, at the cat. The cat then runs over and jumps up at the chute that's shooting out the beach balls. Jump over the beach balls easily and just throw a couple of the diamonds at the cat and it'll close eventually, allowing you to move on to the next level. The next level has you in a boutique that has flowers all on the background. To get items sometimes in the game, you'll have to summon a cat or other animal to knock it off a higher platform for you. 
As you can see, I was able to use the cat to knock off the letter B, which gave me a lot more health. Over here, use the dog, and he'll walk over and eat the bacon, or whatever it is that's flying at you, and allow you to get past without having to dodge it. Next up, you have floating dresses, or plastic bags, whatever they're supposed to be, coming up at you. Just wait for them to go down, and then make an easy jump overwards. You then battle the boss for this area. Use your diamonds to destroy each and every part of the clothing. You have gloves, a top, bottom, hat, and shoes. After you destroy each and every piece, you move on to the next level. The next level is the Galleria. And actually, this ends up being one of the most annoying levels in the game. Every few steps or so, there's a water fountain shooting up a spout of water. You'll have to wait for the water to go back inside the fountain so you can actually jump past it. There's a ton of these, and for the most part, they can get really annoying having to wait and stop every couple of steps. Thankfully though, a few of them just shoot up a water droplet, which you can easily walk underneath. Also, be sure to hit this letter B so a little B comes out of it that makes you invincible for a short period of time. While invincible, that gives you a great opportunity to just walk through a lot of the fountains pretty fast. You'll also notice there is some times that if you're just walking to the right, you can actually easily walk past everything because the timing will work in your favor. Later on, you have fish that'll actually be jumping out of these fountains. Thankfully, these are just as easy to get under as the water droplets, and a few later on will actually be jumping between fountains. These you may have to wait a second or two for the jump over your head, but other than that, continuing just to walk straight to the right without even stopping sometimes, you'll probably be able to get past the level even with taking some damage. After walking through a gazillion fountains, you'll be in the next segment of the mall. And this part has waterfalls. Just like the fountains, you'll have to stand and wait for the waterfall to stop so you can jump over it and continue over to the right. This once again gets pretty tedious and it's definitely one of the worst levels because it just ends up being so boring. While it'll take you a while, thankfully it's not like this level ends up being difficult by any means. After walking through a lot of the waterfalls, you'll have a couple more fountains before you complete the area. The next area is the food court. And to be expected in a food court, you have palm trees. You can use the leaves of the palm trees to bounce upwards in order to get some items and land on some upper platforms. As far as the enemies go in this area, you only have the rolling pizzas that are rolling on the ground. So if you can easily jump over them, you'll have no problem since most of the time you're up in the air on the palm trees anyway. Over here, use the toucan to fly upwards so you can land on it as a platform and jump on top of these boxes. The next area is the pizza shop, which would have made a little bit more sense I guess in the other area, but here you have some tables that are made up with no actual enemies until you make it to the boss. For the boss, you have three ovens shooting pizzas out. What you have to do is climb on top of the pizza boxes that are moving back and forth, and then throw your diamonds into the chutes that are shooting out the pizzas. It'll take two on each of the ovens to shut them, and then you can move on to the next level.
and you gotta love that cutscene of Barbie throwing a coin into the fountain, stairs appearing, and a toucan bringing her a new dress. As you can see, the next level has Barbie thinking about a beach, so we're gonna be turning into a mermaid and swimming underwater. And I should mention that these mermaid controls are nothing like the Little Mermaid game by Capcom. They're extremely stiff and Barbie's tail and other parts of her body just end up getting in the way more when you're trying to go through some smaller areas. Swim straight forward for a while, watching out for bubbles that do nothing to you, and eventually you'll have to make it into a smaller area. If you want some extra points, you can go down to the bottom area and grab that starfish, but that's completely unnecessary. Over here, if you take the top path, it'll lead to a dead end. But, if you throw a diamond at this fish, he'll show you technically the correct way to go as he swims down below and off screen. Continue along the bottom path here, watching out for seashells that float downwards and then back up. This area may look extremely easy since there's no enemies, but trust me, swimming through these mazes is really not that easy considering it's almost impossible to get through some of these narrow areas. After going up and down the maze about a dozen times, you'll finally be out of that area. Watch out for the she shell at the end, and then continue along the bottom. Over here, you'll have to use your diamond again on one of the angelfish to show you the correct way, with this time being the upwards path instead of the bottom path. When the area opens up, you can choose both paths again, stay on the upper path because the bottom one will once again lead to a dead end. After this segment, you'll have a large series of stars made up that spell out the word Barbie. Afterwards, it'll actually complete this area and you'll move on to the next part of the underwater stage. This is by far the worst level in the game. You have these tornadoes underwater that end up causing you to get pulled in the direction that they're going. Some of these end up pulling you into a circle that you'll get stuck in and it's almost impossible to get out. Other ones just end up slowing you up a lot. While going through this segment, do your best to avoid the jellyfish as well. If you time it just right, you actually will hit the tornado at the right moment that'll send you right, but it won't end up pulling you backwards and going into a loop. 
once you're over here, watch out for the tornado and throw one of your hearts at the dolphin. You'll then latch on to the dolphin and he'll take you forward right to the exit of the stage for the next boss. Here we have another extremely easy boss. Swim upwards and select the diamond, and then throw three diamonds at the lock to save the king and queen crab. Our next dream has Barbie in a soda pop shop, having her going back to the age of the 50s. Over here, throw a heart at the ice cream cone, and the ice cream will fly up into the air and turn off the soda fountain. Watch out while jumping on these coffee cups that you don't try to jump on the top one while steam is coming out. One of the most annoying enemies in this level is a cup of soda. It shoots a straw straight up to hit you, as well as it throws its lid off, even though it keeps the straw in lid so it can keep firing over and over again. Over here, you can once again use your heart to hit the ice cream cone, so that it jumps up and knocks the item from above down. You can grab it for some extra health. Over here, you can use the hamburger in order to turn off the soda again, or, in the case of me, I'm just gonna walk through it at this point. Use the ice cubes to jump on top of the soda bottle so you can continue over to the right. You can once again use a hamburger to knock another item off the top area to get some more health if you do need it. Over here, be sure to hit this hamburger because it'll actually turn off three of the fountains right in a row. Jump over the roller skate that's throwing nails at you, and then walk over to right and use this soda. The fizz that comes out of the top of the soda you can use to propel yourself upwards in order to get over the platform. Over here, it's time for the next boss battle. You have five soda fountains set up, and you have to turn off all of them. All you have to do, though, is hit them once with your heart in order to turn them off. Once you hit all five of them, you move on to the next level. The next level of the pop shop has you jumping on giant hamburgers and using spoons to catapult Barbie over platforms. A little bit farther in, you'll have giant sets of french fries in the background shooting fries up into the air. Just like the fish from the fountain area, just be sure to walk underneath of them while they're going above. And of course, with the hamburgers, you want to make sure that you get past the patty before it, the hamburger bun ends up falling back down on you. After walking past a few more fries, you make it to the next level, which is just a boss battle. And 
just like the menu said right before it, it's time for dessert. And the dessert for this level is three giant things of ice cream. All you have to do is use your hearts to deplete each mound of ice cream. You have to hit each mound four times to deplete it all the way so you can move on to the next level. As long as you grab the health right before this area, you should have plenty of it in order to complete the level and the boss. Now it's time for the final two levels of the game. This level is a giant dance floor. You have to jump on these music notes on the far left and jump on each and every one of them. If you fall down at any point during this stage, the floor sends you flying backwards all the way to the beginning of the level. Since the platforming is not very good in this game, this is probably the hardest stage that the game has to offer. You also have to watch out for falling coins as well. When you make it to the end of the notes, you'll then have to jump on spinning records. When you land on them, just take your time and walk to the very edge before trying to attempt to jump to the next one. After them, you have some spinning gears for you to jump on that will fall after you land on them, so you'll have to quickly move off of them. Right here, wait for about a dozen coins to fall before you continue moving over to the right. Be sure to use the last gear at the very end to grab the health that's slightly above, then walk into the coin return for the final boss of the game. It's a giant jukebox. In order to beat it, you have to jump on the spinning coins on the bottom. You have to have all three coins spinning while dodging the music notes coming out of the jukebox in order to complete the level. You don't actually attack the jukebox in any way, shape, or form. After I get both the left one and the center one spinning rather well, I then move all the way over to the right to get the last one spinning. Once you have the right one spinning just a little bit, you'll complete the stage as well as complete the game. You can sit back and enjoy the ending to Barbie on the NES. At the very end of the game, we get to see a heart silhouette, Barbie and Ken kiss, and they dance a little bit before going back to the title screen. I have to be honest, considering how poor the game is overall made, it actually has a decent ending, which is something I can't say for a lot of other NES games, including ones that are actually good. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.